I did it. I did it, y'all. I was really at Publix earlier and I was looking for candy for when DK Metcalf becomes a Raven. Enough is enough. First question came from my guy Terry. He said, What's up, Engraven? Hope you and the fam are doing great. Well, yes, we are. We are. We're actually doing stupendous. Shout out to my guy Barney. He said, I wanted to ask you what moves offensively do you want to see the Ravens make? Oh, you want to ask me about off? Really? You sure? I don't know if you want to have it. Anyway, um, y'all already know. I'm all for getting a young up and coming slash proven talent uh, at the wide receiver position. Um, somebody who's a game changer, somebody who's a difference maker to add to the difference makers that we have already. And just to make the Ravens that much more hard to defend. Remember indefensible offense? I didn't come up with that. Somebody else did though. But anyway, he said, I don't know why Ravens fans are held to the standard that Lamar has enough weapons in Hollywood, Bateman, and Big Money Mark. Brady had Mike Evans, Godwin, and Gronk, and still got A.B. Rams already had Cooper Cup, Higby, Van Jefferson, and still went and got Allen Robinson. I guarantee you the Chargers go get a wide receiver in the draft because they're taking advantage of Herbert's rookie deal and want to be successful. And after this morning, uh, the Bills signing Diggs and then the Bobby Wagner signing with the Rams, EDC should, EDC should know the cap is cap. <laughs> ah, I like that one. Uh, he said, with there still being guys in free agency, who do you want the Ravens to get and select in the draft? I say we go James Cook, Dalvin, Dalvin's younger brother in round four or five to help the run game and go Pickens in rounds two or three. See, a lot of these top wide receivers – um, Burks, because y'all y'all know Straylon Burks, okay, cool uh, George Pickens, hey, no problem with that I would not be mad with that at all, either um, Ravens got a lot of options At wide receiver um, And before we keep Well, let me keep going first uh, He also said, hope you and the fam are doing good Stay safe and trust And he said, P.S. Since 2018, every past Super Bowl winner Had either 5 to 6 mil in positive cap space Or negative 1 to 5 mil in cap all right, appreciate that little tidbit. So, um, if the Ravens, this is what I would want the Ravens to do. My first hope would be that they would trade for somebody. Um, that's, again, DK Metcalf would be the one on my list now, uh, up and coming guy. Um, if they didn't do that, then what I would want them to do uh, would be to draft, because y'all know I've been saying they're going to draft the receiver in the first three rounds. Now, if they traded for a wide receiver, a high-quality wide receiver, then, okay, um, then that would erase that. Um, but if they don't, then, yeah, it's receiving the first three rounds for sure. No questions asked. Um, on a side note, I am very glad that the Texans, they re-signed Brandon Cooks to a two-year deal. Uh, because I heard some talk about him, and I was thinking, uh, nope, nope, nope. He's nice, good receiver, productive receiver, did his thing with the Saints, the Patriots, the Texans, and whoever else he played for. But we got enough, like, smaller stature receivers. We need to go get a big guy and that guy. Um, so, anyway, uh, if they draft a receiver in the first three rounds, I would still want them to go sign a veteran wide receiver. And a guy who I would really like if they, that they signed even even with them drafting a guy, would be Julio Jones. And the reason I say that is this, because if they draft a wide receiver, and I would expect that wide receiver to have a bigger frame, 6'2", 6'3", and be able to go up and get it aggressive. You talking about George Pickens, yeah, like we always say on here, Marcus Peters on offense. Great. I would love that. Um, but then keep adding. Add another one. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready, right? Hey, that, that's what my, that my motto is. And with a Julio Jones, cause I know some people going to say, oh, man, Julio Jones, he's washed, he's injury prone. For what? What would be the reason? Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. He wouldn't have to come over here and be a starter. He wouldn't have to come over here and do what Sammy Watkins did last year for those five or six games. Julio would be extra ammo in the arsenal. Extra ammo in the arsenal. And just in case somebody tired, just in case somebody gets hurt, just in case somebody ain't ready, then the Ravens would have already stayed ready. And you ain't got to go out, go all crazy looking for replacements and whatnot because you got somebody sitting right there on the bench. That's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. Just what I mean, what I mean. You too
team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it. Gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven? Right and graven. YouTube, Team Keep It Clean, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of NFL Questions from Subs Where you can ask any NFL question and we answer it in a video like this Now if you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com But for the patrons, y'all don't have to go through all that Y'all can send it directly on Patreon if you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron I appreciate y'all by the way, thank you for being willing to do that uh, You can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids And if you don't want to, you don't have to it's completely fine I love y'all uh, It's been a little while since we've been able to do questions from subs But hey, we here now so let's get it Ooh, next question came from my guy Gold Morano And he said creating a division winning offense How's it going Engraven? Thank you for the Lamar recruiting news for one DK Metcalf If someone can convince EDC to trade for Metcalf I promise to stop crying, whining and begging for him to draft Drake London with the 14th pick Another option right there. So, again, Ravens going to have their options. His name had completely slipped my mind earlier when we were talking about the receiver. So, that's another one. Anyway, he said, although I'd much rather he trade for Metcalf and, and ooh, I like him. He said, although I'd much rather he trade for Metcalf and draft London. So, see, I'm not the only one trying to double dip. My guy, Gold Morano, he, he gets it too. But anyway, and I actually like his idea better than mine. Because ooh, Anyway, let's keep going. He said, you have said on more than one occasion, invest heavily in your quarterback. Invest heavily in your quarterback. Yes, I have said it. Don't invest skinnily. Invest engravenly in your quarterback, heavily in your quarterback. Anyway, all the top teams continue to improve the receiving course for the sake of their quarterbacks. It's high time the Ravens make a substantial investment in Lamar. And yes, this conversation, we shouldn't even be having this conversation. We shouldn't still be having this conversation uh, in Lamar Jackson's fifth year. It's, it's kind of sad. And, and, and Lamar Jackson's fourth year starting. Because again, his first year, he ain't start till the middle of the season. It ain't like they can go crazy and free agency in the middle of the season. No. So we shouldn't be having this conversation in his fourth year starting. But anyway, he said, question, we know that Metcalf would not come cheap. I would guess that he would be listed at a cost of at least three draft picks. I'm estimating a first round in 2022, third round in 2022, and a second round in 2023, and Tylen Wallace or Devin DuVernay. What say you? See, I've been seeing this a lot to where I, a lot of people feel like with DK Metcalf, it's going to take more than draft picks, that it's going to take players as well. I keep hearing that a lot, so maybe y'all might be on to something. He said, what would EDC have to come, come up off of in order to get DK Metcalf uh, to report to the cast of this summer? Mm. Something that he's never given up before. And the reason I say that is because we hear about EDC's aggressiveness. We, we hear about a lot of almost things that happened. Um, and we appreciate the effort. And the, the effort is great. Um, but then when you think, and you just think about the Ravens in general as a whole, um, they are very reluctant to give up those draft picks, especially significant draft picks. First round, have they ever traded a first round for a player before? Off the top of my head, I would want I want to say no. I can't think of anything. Um, but they're hesitant to give up those significant draft picks. First round, second round, third round. Uh, but yeah, they usually hesitant with those. Um, it just all it just always comes to my mind uh, when it comes to giving up draft picks uh, when they could have got Jarvis Landry, but then I don't know. Then they could have got uh, really the biggest one for me more recently. Uh, well, not more recently, but Jalen Ramsey. That was uh, when we all heard that story how they didn't want to give up. Uh, I think it was a third round pick. They were willing to give up a first and a fourth, but not a first and a third to move up in the first round to get Jalen. Like, oh man, like he was worth it and more. He, he was worth so much more than that. And it's like people knew how nice he was coming out of college and that this dude, like he, he was going to be like that. And he came out of college and he was like that. So guys who you just know are going to be like, and you're a defensive team on top of that. So it's like, that's the extra bonus. If he was a wide receiver or something, then if he was a quarterback, he was a running If he was an offensive player and the Ravens ain't want to move up for him, I would understand because Ravens, they're not used to guys who are like that on offense like that. And they, that that's, hasn't been them. 
But it's, it was a defensive player, and you weren't willing to give that up? Oof, man. So with DK Metcalf, man, what would they have to come up off of to get him? Ooh, just some way out of the ordinary. First round pick. I, I think if it's – I think if, if the trade – what he gets traded for would be uh, multiple picks in the first two rounds, I think that, that would shut the Ravens out. I don't think they would do it. I don't think they, I don't think they would do it. If, if it was – like I said, if it was picks in the uh, the first two rounds, the first and second round, I don't think they would do it. If it was either or, and even then some on top of that, like if it was a first and a third and later, or a second and a third, or a second and whatever later, I think they'd do it. But a first and a second, I just don't see them doing it. Uh, and it's funny, my, my guy G-Star. He asked a similar question too. He said, "Hey, Engraven, hope everything is well with the family. Much love for what you do and appreciate you. I appreciate you too, G." He said, "My question is, would you be for or against the Ravens using their first round pick and another lower round pick to acquire DK Metcalf? Please explain your pros and cons of doing so or not." Thank you again, Engraven. And either way, I'm excited for the upcoming season and your awesome coverage. Appreciate it. About awesome for, but we do have a good time on here, so I appreciate you being a part of it. Um. What would I be willing to give up for one DK Metcalf? Uh, yeah, I, I would be. Me personally, I would definitely be give, willing to give up a first round pick, for sure, and change. So if it was a first and a second, okay, cool, I'm cool with it. I mean, I know a lot of y'all probably looking at me like I'm crazy right now, but some of y'all are like, yeah, 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 I would give up even more, and no problem. I I, I would be willing to do it because you you know what you're getting. You know who you're getting. I, I see people's. Oh yeah, he got inconsistent hands. Uh, he's an inconsistent route runner. Okay. You you think that's scaring me off? You you think that's scaring me off? No, it's it's certainly not. Um, he as long as oh the, another one that I, that I hear oh DK Metcalf did their, their games where he disappears. Okay. This is why I, I want the Ravens to build a unit, a unit, because say, for instance, DK Metcalf having a rough game. OK. All right, DK. Hey, that's fine. We got Hollywood. We got Rashad Bateman. We got Mark Andrews. They got your back. Hopefully you can recover during this game. But worst case scenario, you don't. We have other guys, too. And remember, on my bench, we still got Julio Jones, too. <laughs> but anyway, that so that stuff doesn't worry me. I'm more enticed by the playmaking ability. I'm more enticed by the physicality. I'm more enticed because the positives are going to outweigh the negatives by far. By far. And it's not even close for me. So I'm willing to make the move. I'm willing to give up multiple draft picks. If players had to be in there too, ooh. That's the painful part right there. But what's got to be done has got to be done. Ravens need to take this offense to another level. They need to. So if you really want to do that, you're going to find a way to get this thing done. Whether it's DK Metcalf or just bringing in somebody else of some serious significance. Serious significance. And, and not stop in there and get greedy with it. Next question came from Jay. He said, what's up, Engraven? It's my first time doing question from Souls, but I'd like to know, what is your thoughts with Ravens just not being aggressive on offense at all and free agency? Year after year after year, just never aggressive. Our main players on offense are literally all drafted players as the following. Lamar Jackson, J.K. Dobbins, Hollywood, Rashad Bateman, Mark Andrews, Nick Boyle, Ronnie Stanley, Devin DuVernay, James Prochet. Don't get me wrong. These players are good. But even other players like Ben Cleveland and Justice Hill were drafted. Shoot, even Gus Edwards was just an undrafted rookie free agent. I name all these players and none are big name signings from free agency. Sure, you can say we added players like Morgan Moses and Kevin Zeitler, but not game changing players like how other offenses have. Stefan Diggs on the Bills. Well, that was a trade. That wasn't free agency. DeAndre Hopkins on the Cardinals. Well, that was a trade. That wasn't free agency. Um... Devontae Adams on the Raiders, that was a trade. That wasn't free agency, too. But um, I do see what you're saying. He also said Odell Beckham Jr. to the Rams. Now, that was free agency, even though it was in the middle of the season. Once free agency starts, it never stops. Um, he said, all we have done on offense was sign uh, Willie Sneed, Seth Roberts, Sammy Watkins, Des Bryant. 
uh, these past couple of years. And by default, we got Murray and Freeman because our backs were injured. I mean, we had Miles Boykin and Willie Sneed alongside Hollywood as our top three wide wideouts in 2019 on our 14-2 run. While other top young quarterbacks at the time had wideouts such as Watson and D-Hop, Mahomes and Tyreek, Baker and Odell. Very frustrating that we have a generational talent at quarterback and all we have to show for it is... I don't like this line, but I'm only saying it because you put it in here. Uh, he said, very frustrating that we have a generational talent at quarterback and all we have to show for it is Miles Boykin running into Willie Sneed on crossing routes. Hopefully Rashad Bateman and Hollywood take us over the top. May God help us all. Mm. Um... So just the lack of aggression by the Ravens on offense. Uh, Ravens on offense. Ravens, to me, they, they seem like they are a uh, potential-based offense. Uh, and what I mean when I say that is the Ravens, Ravens are very really on offense just period. Not even just during a regular season, but during the offseason too. Ravens are very potential-based. Um, and what I mean when I say that is that they, with potential, you hope something happens, but you just don't know for sure that it will. Uh, as far as free agency trades early in the offseason, Ravens, they are very quiet around this time of year with stuff like that. Um, so what has been going on or really what hasn't been going on, it has been no surprise uh, to anybody. Um, but you what Ravens and, and, and Ravens front office has trained you to think and, and trained you to follow is that they are going to be some potential cap cuts that the Ravens could sca sca scavenge through and bring somebody in that can be a difference maker on this team. Um, and they do do that. They, they do sign cap cuts. They wait, they wait, they wait. And some guys get cut, usually after June 1st. Then the Ravens, they pounce. They say one man's trash is another man's treasure. Um, and sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. But more so on offense. On offense, uh, yeah, it's it's been rough. So you get what you pay for. Um, and my thing, like I know whenever we talk about the offense, a lot of people say, hey, well, look at 2019. Even look at 2018, 2020. We, we led the league in, a, I think, point differential from 2019 to 2020. Uh, and then, of course, 2021, we, our offense was doing good and everybody got hurt. See, but my thing is that, yeah, the Ravens, regular season, they do their thing. They do their thing. But when it counts the most, the only guys that have been showing up to play consistently in the playoffs have been Lamar Jackson and Hollywood Brown. And just taking Lamar Jackson now, because even that Bills game, it was a little shaky for him. Um, but Hollywood. Hollywood has been the biggest consistent at wide receiver for the Ravens in the playoffs. There has been nothing else from anybody else. And this is why I say to add more. This is the biggest reason why I say to add more, add better, add quality. Because regular season, Ravens do enough to get by. They do enough to get by. Sometimes they make it pretty, sometimes it's ugly, but they always do enough to get by. Well, when Lamar Jackson's out there. When he's not, ooh, yikes. But in the playoffs, you need, that's when your biggest playmakers, they come through. Your biggest playmakers come through. Look at Joe Burrow with Jamar Chase. And then he had his other options too. Look at Patrick Mahomes with Tyreek Hill. And then he had his other options too. Look at Josh Allen with Stephon Diggs. And there was the game, wasn't it the Chiefs game? Was that the game where Gabe Davis had like four touchdowns? So when you have quality options, they come through. They come through. So many people are so fixated on the regular season and the regular season alone. And, not, and, and I can understand that, but I'm thinking past that. I'm thinking past that. So many people feel like, oh, yeah, Ravens have been contenders for the longest. Have they? Have, in the regular season, oh, yeah. And, and I think everybody has a different opinion on what a contender really is and that's fine that's fine what i feel like a contender is may not be what you feel like a contender is and that's two thousand percent fine but i to me a contender is not just somebody that shows up in the regular season but somebody that shows up in the playoffs too now 
losses matter, but not, not only the losses matter, but the way that you lose, that matters. Say, for instance, if the Ravens, they were getting in the playoffs and, oh, it was these close battles, these back and forth. Oh, but Ravens just keep losing. Oh, man, they lost by two. Oh, man, they lost by six. Oh, man, they lost by three. Oh, man, they lost by one. That's one thing. But they don't score points in the playoffs. They don't. They do not score points in the playoffs. That regular season offense... In the playoffs, usually it vanishes. Even in that Titans game, that offense, they struggled. They struggled in that one. So you need more playmaking options. You need more. That's why I keep being such a big advocate for the Ravens to get more. Now let's flip it to the defense for a little bit because y'all know we can talk about that offense all day. Next question came from my guy, Bullet Atrex. He said, do you think the Ravens will sign Deshaun Elliott? No, I don't. I think um, he'd be sort of like a backup uh, a backup option. Like we'll, we'll hit him up just in case. Uh, maybe if somebody went down or somebody got hurt or something, but I, I don't think he will be a priority to the Ravens at all. Uh, he said, really loved him as a player and would love to keep him on the Ravens, but with the signing of Williams, it seems unlikely. Uh, do you see any scenario where the Ravens keep Elliott around? Yeah, not right now. And let, let's keep it on the defense for a little bit now. Mars had a question. Mars said, worries about the interior defensive line. Hey, Engraven, hope your day is going well. Oh, it's going really good. Uh, I have some concerns about our one underdiscussed position, that being the interior defensive line, namely defensive tackle. I don't see many fans addressing... <laughs> Excuse me, how weak the defensive line is as a whole, with a lot of people hyper fixating on edge and not understanding how shallow defensive tackle right now is for the Ravens. Um, right now, defensive tackles, Michael Pierce, obviously, uh, Matabike. So <clears throat> right now, as it stands, we know stuff is going to change. They could sign some new people. They could sign some old people. They could draft some people. But as of right now, it's Michael Pierce, Matabike with an increased role, Broderick Washington with an increased role. Derek Wolf, um, who am I missing? Uh, I think that's it. Um, he said Brandon Williams is a free agent, as is Calais Campbell. We lost Jelly. Yep, he went to the Giants. And Matabike fits in better as a defensive end, in my opinion. That leaves us with Michael Pierce and Daylon Mack. Whoa, ho, 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 ho. hey, you got to update your roster, Madden, my friend. Daylon Mack has been long gone from the Ravens, long gone. Mack Truck, he pulled out the driveway a long time ago. Um, he said, given that defensive tackles are rarely every down players, and how long has it been since we've had a quality defensive tackle? He said, Big Baby's been playing like a small child the last two seasons. I'm done. Well, actually, a, a Big Baby is younger than a small child, so that would actually be an improvement. So see, you thought you dissed him, but you actually gave him some praise. He said, I wonder if you think similarly, that the fan base is so hyper-fixated on getting sacks from edge defenders that they aren't worrying about getting guys to create the interior pressure. Um... No, because I've been hearing a lot about a lot about both. We've been talking about the interior pressure on here for a while now, too, uh, and because that would help the exterior pressure as well. But exterior pressure, it's empty out there, too. Justin Houston, he's gone. Tyus Bowser, he's hurt. Pernell McPhee, he's gone. So it's like Dalen Hayes, he's be, he'll be coming back from injury. Dafe Away, he'll be coming back from an injury. But, I mean, his injury wasn't nothing crazy, but still. So you you need both. <laughs> Basically, you, you need both. Um, he said, uh, to me, if Jordan Davis is available at 14, you take him. You can trade up for a job at the end of the first if you really want proven edge talent. See, yeah, that's a tricky one right there with a job. Just depends on how that recovery will go. Uh, he'll be healed by the time he's needed, even if that isn't by week one. Then you can sign Melvin Ingram or Justin Houston or Jadavian Clowney. Y'all know that's my guy. Uh, to fill in across from away and be just fine. Oh, ooh, man. Jadavian Clowney coming off of nine sacks last year with the Browns. Him and Away. Both are good against the run. Both are really good against the run. Both are crazy fast. Both have a uh, burst. And if we could get somebody to just create that interior pressure too, with the man. Dog. Mm, mm, mm. Otherwise, what do we do for defensive tackle? Not many free agents at the position are too appealing. And though I love for us to sign Ogan Joby, he recently failed the physical for the Bears. Did the Bengals bring him back yet? I thought they did, but maybe they didn't. I don't even remember what happened with him. 
Because he, what, what, he tore like his Achilles or something. He had some injury that took him out too. But anyway, um, so I guess that would, what would be your preferred plan to address the needs at defensive tackle and edge? Well, we just talked about edge with Clowney. Um, but defensive tackle, yeah. Uh, oof, what are the options? Adamakin, he's still out there. Um, maybe uh, with Matt Abike, but again, you got to stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. But still, with Matt Abike, maybe him in an increased role with Michael Pierce alongside him, maybe that, that could be the answer that we've been looking for as far as interior pressure. Him, he will be in his third year. Um, and he's shown flashes, but he just hasn't been able to really be out there consistently like that. So Matt Abike could be it. Yeah, if Jordan Davis, if they drafted him, I wouldn't be mad at that at all. Um, so that would add more quality depth. Um, but may, mm, maybe they give him a chance. Broderick Washington, he wasn't too bad either. Um, but maybe Matt Abike, this could be that opportunity that they've been waiting on. And sometimes that's why we say... You got to stay ready so you, you ain't got to get ready because when your time comes, you got to show out. Yeah.